Well, hello, everybody. I hear the clock chiming downstairs. So it is noontime on the East Coast. Today you are creating with Colleen, where I will teach you what to do. I may teach you what not to do, but I always promise to teach you something. So today, I cannot believe it, is August 10th. Um, I just returned from the most amazing week at Lake Gaston with my six grandbabies, my sons, um, you know, oh my goodness, it was, it was just great having the whole family there. And as you know, I was supposed to come to you live last Wednesday. I had some gnome cards I was going to share. I had the best intentions. And I got to tell you, when you have six grandbabies, um, they're in bed at nine o'clock at night. You're in bed by 920 you know, back in the old day, we used to uh, be just getting down, settling down to play cards for a couple hours. But those days are gone. And they're gone, and I'm so glad because it was really a joy having them all there. And so every morning, somebody was up by 630, and I totally forgot about our Facebook Live. So I did come to you live. If you didn't see it, check out my Creating with Colleen Facebook page. And um, I shared a little bit there, but it was a wonderful time. And I'm already looking forward to next year. So as I promised, we are creating today, and I am going to be using the Hello Harvest Stamp Set and Dies. This is a, a fall, beautiful fall card that I love the colors. Um, if you know anything about me, fall is my most favorite season. And although I have some gorgeous Christmas stamp sets and I need to start thinking Christmas, I can't do it. It is like 96 degrees here in Virginia. And it's all about just trying to stay cool. So those days will come in September. But for today, we are going to create this card. Now let's just get a little bit of business out of the way first. Um, I always, whatever card I create, I always draw a name for those who leave a comment or share. Uh, subscribe to my um, YouTube channel. So two weeks ago, I created this card using the Soft Seedling Stamp Set and the Faux Silk Technique. So I drew a name and Becky tipped in Schlossenagel. I hope I said that right because I am a true butcher of vocabulary. But Becky, you actually uh, won this card. So if you, you will private message me your address, I will be more than happy to send it to you. And I thank you for watching. Also, I have not heard yet from Tracy Carter. Tracy, a couple weeks ago, I drew your name to receive the Happy Hippos Beach card. So again, private message me your name and I'll send that to you. If not, I might have to draw another name because I know somebody would love that card. So as y'all know, it's celebration. So real quick with celebration, we do have a few items sold out. As you know, things are only available while supplies last. So as you go through here, thankfully our hippos hippos. I always call it happiest hippos because they make me happy. This is still available, but I have seen that it's on low inventory. So with a minimum $50 order, you can get the stamp set or you can get the hippo dies. Um, it's whether you spend minimum $50 or $100 as the products that you get. The Rings of Love designer paper is with us. Uh, the Pool Party and Soft Sea Foam cards and envelopes, they are sold out. They went quick. It shocked us all. Uh, but they're great. Why wouldn't they? Then the Stylish Sketches is still available for a minimum $50 order. So is the Silver and Gold 6x6 Designer Paper. The Amazing Phrases is available with a minimum $100 order. The Tree Lot Dies are sold out. I know that makes a lot of you unhappy. So if for any reason you did not get them in time, um, let me know. God is good and works miracles. We'll see what we can do. So then you have, oops, one more, the Wonderful World stamp set and the designer paper. That is still available and it's absolutely gorgeous. And then if you host a uh, party and have a minimum $300 order, you can get the perfect pomegranate stamp set for free. So one of the things Stampin' Up! did, which is so nice, is they did give us more items to choose from for celebration. So here you have the uh, timber embossing folder, the gingham, the seashells embossing folder, the brush metallic 12 by 12 paper, the craft gift boxes, and the silver foil 12 by 12 paper. You can receive all of those with a minimum $50 order. 
course, with each. Um, and then they have the flowers of home dyes, the dots and spots, daffodil dyes, and the aspen tree dyes. Those are all available with a minimum $100 order. So those are regular items. And if you're not sure, I was excited to see the aspen tree dyes were an item you can get for free. This is the stamp set on page 46 of the July through December mini catalog, but I love the dies. This die alone right here, which has created this card, sold me right there. So um, thankfully I stocked up on some cardstock and adhesives and I am getting the dies for free. So you can also purchase the stamp set and then with your minimum $100 order, get the dies. But I just loved these river birch trees. So let me see who has popped on. I was looking at the image and I was like, oh, nobody's here. And then I scrolled down and I'm like, ah, the gang's all here. So uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, listen to me. Sharon and Lynn is here, Gwen, Barb. And for some reason I can never see past that, but I'm glad you gals are here. You're always so good and so faithful. So let's go ahead and create, because I got uh, this fun card to show you. And keep in mind, this card actually, um, you know, it's a, it's a fun fold. So with a fun fold, you can use this pattern for absolutely anything. And that's what I love about the fun folds. So here are the pieces that you're going to need, but I've already taken my picture and I will post it on our Facebook page as soon as I'm done. You are going to need, let me reach over here, a five and a half, five and a half by seven and a half piece of old olive, and you are going to score that at three and a quarter. Then you are going to need a four inch, it's four inches this way, by three and a quarters, and you're going to score it at three and a quarters inch, because what you're doing is this is going to be a square, and that gets tucked under. So that is that piece. Hey, Diane and Kay, I'm glad you have popped on. We are just getting started. Took care of a lot of business in the beginning, but we are getting ready to create. Then you have a four by and a five and a quarter inch piece of basic white. You have to have some scraps. You need a just a scrap of pumpkin pie and a scrap of basic white because that's what you're gonna stamp your flowers and your pumpkin on. And then all of these pieces come from the Rustic Harvest Designer Series paper, which is in this suite, and it's absolutely beautiful. So here we have a three by five and a quarter inch piece of Rustic Harvest Designer Series paper. Then we have a three by three inch piece. We have a one by five and a quarter, and then you're just gonna need a strip that is three quarters inch um, high or wide of basic white. Really doesn't matter how long because we're gonna be trimming that up anyways. So I'll see, Kay is in the car heading to Waynesboro going camping, good. Kay, I hope somebody else is driving. <laughs> that could be dangerous um, and I'm sure they are, I'm just teasing you. But I'm glad that you um, are going camping. She's such a big camper. And Stephanie is too, uh, but you didn't get a notification, uh, so you went and looked, and here I am. Thank you, Steph. Thanks for hunting me down. And hello, Sherry. I'm glad you're here also. Okay. So let me, I always need a bigger table, but my arms would only reach so far anyways. Let's go ahead and get assembling our card, and then I got a couple things to show you with it. So for the card itself, man, my fingers are not working today. I can't pick anything up. For the card itself, you're going to take this card base, and as I said, I scored it at three and a quarter. So you're just going to fold this down, take your bone folder, and give it a nice crease. So we're actually constructing the base of the card first. So with this, four and three and a quarter, and I scored it at three and three quarters, I'm going to give that a really good crease. And I'm putting my adhesive on the back here, and I'm going to put it right up against the edge. So when I open my card, it's gonna be like that. So I think I'll use my Tombow liquid for this. Okay. This way I can slide it right to the edge, get it nice where I want it. So I'm putting it up just slightly higher, not much. 
than the original because once I had this right in the center, I put my words down here. And I thought, well, maybe I could move that a little higher, but I don't wanna move it much. Y'all know I'm a symmetrical person. So here, let me put that in there. I've got my base piece on here. So you have this, but you're not gonna see this piece because this is how your card is going to go together. You want to take that, um, uh, let me see, who just popped, Joyce popped on. Hey, Joyce, she has a few minutes for her 1230 client. Oh, your client, very good. Thanks for joining me. For some reason, I keep thinking um, you're traveling today. But having a client is good, too. She'll be there, too. So here I'm taking my strip of designer paper, and I'm actually putting this on that four by five and a quarter inch piece of basic white. So it's easier for me to see it turning this way. And of course, let me look at the back, make sure I'm even. That's why I like the Tombow liquid, because I could slide that over a little bit. Y'all know it's always difficult to see white on white. And since this was not an even four inch or six inch, this was five and a quarter, I like to just go a little bit. Here we go. Let me go this way. Just go a little bit longer to make sure it's on that edge. So I trim that off. So now that I have this, I should be putting my tools back so I have room to stamp. Hey, Mary, I'm glad you're here. I'm going to take my adhesive, and this goes right in the middle. And so that really covers up that little bit of a flap. So my card's coming together. Now I'm gonna put that three inch piece here, three by three. And this paper, incidentally, is gorgeous. What I really like about it is you have a lot of your colors on the front, and then the back of each one is black and white. So there's a lot you can do with that. First of all, black and white goes with everything, but secondly, you can color it. So let me show you just real quick the designer paper. Of course, you have some great fall colors. So that's your old olive. That's your black and white. Let me scoot down here. Hello, Joyce. Then you have, of course, Cajun Craze. This here I was really intrigued with, so I'm gonna show you, because you can color this with your blends, your pencils. You can take your blender brushes. Um, lots of things you can do. It doesn't have to stay black and white. Just remember that, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is gorgeous. I just think that is so soft. And then of course, pumpkins. It'll be pumpkin season soon with our diagonals. And then they gave you another one of these sheets, which I love because you can cut this to where it's only five and a quarter inches, you know, cut it in half. Then you cut these sections into four inch pieces and you have the front of a card. So you have the front of six cards right here. And then you can just Put that together with some words and have a gorgeous card already done very very quick so that's our designer paper um and that's what i was, wanted to show you so here what i did is on the card itself i used the cajun craze that's a, that's the inside of my card but then this is where you had those gorgeous leaves on the back so I could, I thought, let me see what it looks like. I got a few minutes before I start to color the leaves. So here I took that piece and I colored it with the blends. You do have to remember, once you color it, you don't have a choice because your blends will bleed through. So unless you kind of like that look, then you have these here. So at first I was going to create my card and put the leaves on here, but I wasn't sure if the leaves were too dark. Y'all give a shout out and let me know what you think. Because now that I look at it under the light, it doesn't seem too dark, but this just seems to pop more. I think if I was to use the piece that I colored with the blends, I think it would look better if I had the Cajun Craze card base, because then these colors would pop. So that was my little dilemma. Um, so I'm debating what to do, whether I should put the piece on there or not. But who knows, maybe I will. Maybe I'll use it and do it like the original card. So let me see, Kay likes both. 
Kay loves the leaves. No, Barb likes both. Kay loves the leaves. Uh, Joy says, nope, love the leaves colored. Alrighty. Let me see. Love fall colors. All right. I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and go with what y'all said. I'll use this on the old olive. Even though I think it, it um, pops a little bit more on the Cajun craze. And as y'all share, write down that you, um, you know, you shared, you liked my page, and you can even let me know which design you liked, and that's the card that I'll mail you if I draw your name. So now going to the pumpkin, let me get it over here. Those scraps that I said you have to have, because we're going to create this right now. I kind of went back and forth. First I used um, Cajun Craze, and I thought it was kind of dark. The pumpkin pie just kind of didn't do it for me. So here I have the Calypso Coral. I wouldn't think to stamp the outline in that, but I'm using it on the pumpkin pie. So here I have my pumpkin, and I really kind of like that it made my outline just a little bit brighter. And while I'm stamping, I'm going to take that scrap of basic white, and I'm going to stamp it in the Memento Tuxedo Black. Put it down here. And those I will be coloring with blends. So I know that y'all who are on here, I know that you really do know how to use the die cutting mean machine, but I wanted to show it at least with the um, uh, the pumpkin because hopefully there's some new stampers and they had not seen it before. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna show you really quick. These are, this is the stamp set. So the stamp set is Hello Harvest. And again, I think it's absolutely beautiful. This is my stamp set that I'm using for the month, for my uh, monthly class. Now in it, you have the rustic pumpkin dies. So with the dies, I didn't make a cheat sheet yet, but with the dies, of course, you have your pumpkin outline, which I'll be using. You have dies to match the banner, the flowers, the leaf, and then you have these dies here. Let me see, I think I actually popped them out some. I was, I was playing. And they actually create the texture so you can make a pumpkin. Then you have little curly cues to put on the pumpkins or you have the stump itself. So you could do it like that. You could actually take, did I have three of these? You could take like three of them, put them together to make your pumpkin. You can do a lot with the dies in this set. So now my class, it's you cannot take the in-person class because it'll it's next Thursday and I wouldn't get the supplies in time, but you can still get this class as a class to go. So basically you get the stamp set, you um, get a half a pack of the leaf label, amber gem, and combo dies. So here you have these really cool leaves that are in here, quite a bit of them. And then these are the amber gems, and they are really, really pretty. So with the class, you get, again, half a pack of that, half a pack of the designer series paper, and then the Hello Harvest stamp set for only $48. And what you need to know is that um, the products alone would cost you $39 if you bought them on your own. So for less than $10, I am adding the four cards and they are always upscale cards. And that's your class. So if you're interested, let me know. Again, only as a class to go, but you will have everything you need to create the four projects along with written directions. And if you wanna add the dies, just add an additional $26 to the class fee. And I think you'll be glad you did. So, cutting this, I have the pumpkin pie. Now what I like to do is stampin' up his tried a few times to come up with a magnetic plate. And sadly, they've just had some issues with it. Um, the last one seemed like it was really gonna work well and then the plates started splitting. Only on some of them. So they had to discontinue it because thankfully, I work for a company that will only sell top-notch product. And so I'm sure they're back at the drawing board. But keep in mind, a post-it note has always worked. You just take the sticky part of the post-it note. I had a clean one and I couldn't find it, so I'm just going to use this. And you're going to put this on your die, okay? And just put your post-it note over it. And that's going to hold that die in place. 
Some people use washi tape. Sometimes I think it's too strong, uh, but a post-it note always does well. Then you have your die cutting machine. You're gonna take your basic plate number one, and since it's a framelit and it's thin, you're gonna take this plate right here, the die cutting plate number two, and put that down. Add yourself an acrylic plate. Add the piece that you are cutting with the cut side down and just roll it through with that acrylic plate on top. It's like a little sandwich. And then when I take it out, start throwing stuff on the floor. Then I have my pumpkin already cut out. So that's the die cutting machine and it's great to have. Um, great tool because we have a lot of awesome dies and folders. So what I have here, I have my pumpkin and I am going to mist it with my shimmer paint. You all know about that. Um, so with the shimmer paint, it's um, a little bit of shimmer paint in here with 70% alcohol. And I'm gonna give that a good spritzing because I want it to be nice and shiny. Okay. And I'm just gonna set that aside. Now to color, I did, let me see. Here we go. I went ahead and cut these out already since you've seen how it's done. And I'm just gonna go in with the blends. So the way I'll do the blends is, um, just come in here, this is Daffodil Delight, and I have a very light hand, so that's why I like using the brush end. If you tend to have a heavier hand, you wanna use um, the shorter end. So what I'm talking about, you have a thick line, there's your brush end, you have a thin line, and there's your fine tip. So I do use a fine tip for when I'm blending, but when I'm coloring, I like to come in here and just use the broad tip. Plus, I think it goes just a little bit quicker. So I came in there with the Light Daffodil Delight. Okay, Joyce, yes, I'll show you in a minute the Shimmer Paint. It's a product that Stampin' Up! used to carry and then um, they stopped, but it was never exclusive to them. And it's just a little thing, I'll show you. You can buy it online because again, it was never exclusive to Stampin' Up! But I am just hoping and praying that they will bring it back. They have already once, so I'm hoping they will do it again. Now this is the crumb cake. So I came in with the light. I usually use my lighter colors first. And then I'm just gonna go around the edge a little bit with the dark. Now, one of the colors that I do like a lot is the Cajun Craze. So I take the light Cajun Craze and I'm just going to hit these little guys here, these little circles. When I get done coloring, I'll show you that, Joyce. Okay, little bit of circles. Oops, almost forgot one. And they're so small, I'm not gonna worry about shading on them. I did on, the flowers and um, and on the centers. So here I'm just coming in with a light old olive and I'm gonna get these smaller ones. It's so nice as they're so small, like one little brush and you're done, just like that. Okay, and then for the larger ones, the leaves with the veins. I thought I'd try a brighter pop of color, so I'm actually using the Granny Apple Green. And I think I'm gonna go with the darker in that because it's light enough that it's gonna give me a little bit more of a contrast between my leaves. But since it was a bright color to start with, it's not too, too dark. So, go here. Almost done, y'all. Right here. There's another leaf. Okay, so my piece is colored. Hold on one second. I'm going to grab that.
I didn't want to forget, Joyce. This is basically the shimmer paint. It's called an all-purpose ink. It's made by Sunoco. T.S. I don't even know. I'm going to try to spell it. Just um, Google all-purpose ink champagne mist. Now, the three colors that Stampin' Up! used to carry was a champagne mist, a frost white, and a silver. Just know that the silver will not work. It was almost like a spray paint. But the champagne mist and the frost white does. You just buy yourself a little sample bottle and you have to use the lower content alcohol. So like a 70% rubbing alcohol. If you go with a like a 92% isopropyl alcohol, it's gonna clog. So use your 70% alcohol. I pour it in here. I put, you know, five or six drops, shake it up, and then I try it on something. Because the thing of it is, you can put more in, but you can't take it out. And sometimes it really can um, get crazy. You know, it can get too much. So, yeah, Stephanie has it and uses it all the time. I don't, I don't blame you, Stephanie. I do, too. Just because it adds that sparkle. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on my pumpkin. But it, it just makes your paper a shimmer paper. So, on the pumpkin, I really wanted that to stand out. So here I have my card. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, let me crease this down so my edges will stay down good. I'm going to put my dimensionals because I want my flowers to pop off the pumpkin. But I'm going to actually put them on the pumpkin. And I kind of like doing that because I don't have to worry about my flowers falling off the top. So I know it's going to stick to the pumpkin because they're on the pumpkin. How's that? Yeah, Barb loves her shimmer spray too. It's, it's really good stuff. So on here, I did want it to fit into my square. So I just kind of eyed it. I don't have to be straight here, but just so I know kind of how high to get with my leaves. So I have that on the back. And then I wanted to pop this up also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my regular dimensionals on the pumpkin itself. And then when I, you know, I didn't want, I wanted to just add a little bit of stability there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the mini dimensional and I'm going to take the backing off. But keep in mind, this has already popped up one. So when I do this one, it's like the thickness of two. So I'm just putting two small ones, one on top of the other. Peel the piece off, otherwise it won't stick to the paper and do it again. So now when I put this on my main piece, It'll be even because I have the, the, I'm going to see if you can see that. I have just the regular dimension and then this has already popped up once. So the two there is going to make it even on the front of my card. So I will pull all my pieces off. Throw them on the floor as I always do. Get them out of my way. And then I have my pumpkin here. Oh, uh, you know, it looks good under the light. It isn't as dark as I thought. So now to do the You're Such a Blessing. I actually cheated and I stamped it straight, but I'm going to try to stamp it for you because it's not a photopolymer. And so I'm kind of guessing. And it's pretty tight. It's three quarters of an inch, but that's okay. So let me see what you guys are saying. I see some comments here. Let me see. Uh, definitely everybody loves the shimmer. Um... Oh, Sherry, you had it and didn't know how to use it? Now I can try to make it up and shimmer everything. Yes, you can, Sherry. You are going to be so glad you saw this and you use it because it really just adds so much to your cardstock. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Lee. Liking the card. That's good. All right, let me keep rolling. Um, so here I'm going to take You Are Such a Blessing. That is in the stamp set. And I'm going to just kind of put it again. It doesn't matter how long. Oh, my goodness. I got lucky again. Okay. So, as I told you, you can just cut it wherever. So, I have You Are Such a Blessing. And I'm actually going to use the Lovely Labels Pick a Punch. I like this because it just adds a different edge on it. So, here I will take... Let me get this one. Here I'm going to take this and I'm going to slide it in upside down so I can see that. So I also like to see it upside down because I can make sure that I'm even and I'm just going to punch that off. 
with this punch, as you can see, there are dotted lines. That's because you can do a half inch, a three quarter inch thickness, or one inch. So what's really cool, I could actually back this on a piece of cardstock because this was only the three quarters. If I took a one inch piece of colored cardstock, did the end like that, then I could mount it on there and it would be, um, you know, the color would be all the way around. But this is really handy for a lot of your words and your tags. Now I wanna make sure I cut the edge straight because this is actually going to go on my card down here. So I think about there looks good. I'm gonna put it up here, open it up, that looks good. And just give a little cut. So on my card, I could pop this up if I want. Mm, that's tempting. Yeah, I gotta pop it up. Okay, so what I'll do is I will get my dimensionals again. Here they are. You know, it's just something about the dimension. Gotta love it. And then here, I'm just make sure that I'm even with the designer paper. I put it on there, and then I'm going to take one of the gems. I think I'm going to go with them. I did a large one last time. Let me go with one of the smaller ones. See which way I like it. And here I put one of those gorgeous amber gems on. And for the inside, it just seemed kind of blank, and I wanted a little something in there. So basically, you have this really cute little curly cube from the stamp set. So I'm just going to ink this up and I'm going to put it in one corner and then I'm going to put it in the bottom corner and it just kind of picks up all those cute little swirls. And that my friends, except for the wing Costella, because I wanted the, some of the flowers to pop, but I don't want my flowers to be all shimmer just like this. I want it, you know, I want them to stand out. So here I'll just put on the sunflowers, my Winka Stella, and it picks up that glitter from the pumpkin. Here we go. And I don't have to put it on another single flower, just on those three, it's, it's perfect. So for your card, if you want it to hold down well, again, just give a good crease on your folds. And that, my friends, is the first of the Hello Harvest cards you will see. So, again, let me know now that you see the finished product. Let me know whether you like the leaves. It doesn't look as dark as I thought. Or if you like the designer paper with the rustic, the Cajun craze. Again, please share, like. You know, if you don't already receive my newsletter, please go to Creating with Colleen to get that. And um, I will definitely draw a name and somebody will be the lucky winner of this. All you'll have to do is private message me your address when I tell you your name next week. And I'll send you the card. So again, don't forget it's celebration. That is ending the end of the month. So you'll want to get your orders in because things are while supplies last only. And I have a few more of the to-go kits on the Rustic Harvick class if you're interested. Private message or email me. So thank you all. Let's see. It's coming in. Everybody likes them both. Good, good. You know, sometimes you don't have to make your mind up. Sometimes you can say, I'll do some like this and some like that. I love that. All right. Well, thank you for joining me, everyone. As always, I enjoyed my time with you. And if there's ever anything I can do for you, uh, you have any questions on creating, please let me know. I am always here to help. I love my stamp room, and um, I appreciate you all sharing your lunch with me and being in here today. So take care, enjoy the day, and make sure you do something creative. Bye-bye now.